September is National Preparedness Month and various emergency preparedness channels are putting out videos every day of the month in regards to emergency preparedness topics. The topic that I'm gonna be doing for my particular contribution to this collaboration is EDC. We're gonna be calling this one EDC 101. EDC stands for Everyday Carry. It's the items that you carry in your pocket from a day-to-day -day basis. So let's get started now with this video featuring EDC 101. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Cliff, also known as The Urban Prepper. I put out videos in regards to various emergency preparedness topics, and one of the ones that I like doing the most are EDC videos. Before getting into EDC, let me just provide you with a quick background into my journey with preparedness. I've been a prepper for around 12 years now. I first got into the concept of emergency preparedness when I was engaged to my now wife, and then when I started having kids, I went full on prepper. And so I've been doing it now for around 12 years, and I've had this channel, The Urban Prepper, for over 10 years now in which I've been putting out various videos on emergency preparedness topics. So again, EDC stands for everyday carry. It means the stuff that you carry in your pockets from a day-to-day -day basis. Everyone basically has an EDC on them, whether they call it their EDC or not. Most people that aren't preppers will usually carry a wallet or they'll carry a cell phone or they'll carry their car keys. Maybe they even have a watch. That's their EDC. A lot of preppers like having additional tools on them from a day-to-day -day basis that provide them with various capabilities when they're out and about. A common tool that a lot of preppers like having as part of their EDC, for example, is a knife or maybe a flashlight. And as part of this EDC 101 video, we're gonna be talking about a lot of the gear that are commonly carried as part of your EDC. Let's do a brief history of the whole concept of EDC. I'm not exactly sure who is the first person to start calling it their EDC, but most likely it came from people that are in the military and are bringing that kind of concept into their everyday lives. A lot of the terms that we use in the world of emergency preparedness come from military terms. So in the military, the stuff that you carry on you from a day-to-day -day basis would be a lot more tactical oriented. So things like well, weapons and magazine and tourniquets and things like that. YouTuber Nut and Fancy was probably one of the originators to evangelize the whole concept of carrying your EDC. Make sure that you subscribe to his channel. Why should you carry an EDC? Well, I believe that you should carry an EDC to allow you to be prepared for things that happen from a day-to-day -day basis. When you're out and about, you usually want to have your wallet with you that has your ID and maybe a credit card. You want to have your phone with you because you want to be able to have communication methods to your friends and family. You want to have the keys to your house and to your car when you're out and about as well. Many people like expanding upon those particular items to provide them with more capabilities. Whether you're out in the city, if you're commuting to work, if you're out in the woods, a lot of people like having additional capabilities on them. It doesn't do you much good if you happen to have a flashlight but it's sitting there on your dresser at home. The same goes with a multi-tool or a knife or a lighter. Perhaps you're out on a camping trip with your friends and you need to start a fire. Most preppers would have a lighter on them as part of their EDC to allow them to start that fire when out camping. Even if you're at a kid's birthday party and someone needs to light the candles, it's good to have that lighter on you as part of your EDC. A lot of ladies out there have an expanded EDC that they've been carrying for years now and that's all the items that are stored in their purse. In a purse, you could carry a lot more EDC items, maybe a checkbook, maybe mints, makeup, and other supplies. But those are just some of the reasons on why you should carry an EDC. It just kind of makes sense to have some additional capabilities with you when you're out and about. Let's talk about some of the common EDC items. Probably the most popular EDC item to have on you is a folding knife. You could usually spot a prepper by seeing if they have a folding knife in their front pocket and just looking for that pocket clip of it. Having a knife provides you with a lot of cutting capabilities. If you don't really want to carry a knife on you, but you still want to have some kind of blade for cutting, a multi-tool is a very common EDC item as well. I did a video a few months back with regard to the multi-tool being the number one urban EDC item. It provides you with a lot of capabilities, whether that be scissors, a bottle opener, a cutting tool, a screwdriver, and more. A flashlight is another very common EDC item. While a lot of us have smartphones that have a little flashlight app on there, having a real flashlight provides you with a lot more illumination capabilities. Flashlights are so small and compact nowadays that you could have a very powerful flashlight in your front pocket to use it whenever needed. As mentioned earlier, I also think having a lighter as part of your EDC is an important item to have. In a true survival situation, having the capability to make fire is key. So if you don't want to sit out there with a bow drill and make a friction-based fire, you could always have that big lighter on you to start a fire. And then having a pen always on you is also a very common EDC item. Whether you're out at the bank, or you're filling out paperwork, or you're at school, oftentimes you need to have a pen for writing. So that one makes sense to carry in your pockets from a day-to-day -day basis. I like thinking about the concept of EDC in terms of tiers. So tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, it helps me keep organized. Tier one is my base EDC items, or the smallest circle in this set of tiers. 
followed by tier two, tier three, and tier four. I like thinking about the movie Zorro in which they had a training circle and each circle got smaller and smaller until it got down to the circle that was on Antonio Banderas's neck and that was his core circle. For me, that's your core EDC items. So tier one for me are those base EDC items that everyone carries on them. Your wallet, your phone, your keys, and possibly a watch. If you were ever to leave the house without one of those items on you, you might feel a little sick to your stomach. For me, that means it qualifies for a tier one EDC item. In countries and states where you're legally able to carry a firearm, a lot of people carry a firearm as part of their EDC as well. And some people feel a little sick if they don't have it on them at all times. On my channel, I don't really dive into that topic in too great of detail, but there's a lot of other great channels out there that do. So for me, the next tier, tier two, are the prepper tools. So things like a flashlight, a multi-tool, a folding knife, a pen, a lighter. Those are all items that I have as part of my tier two. For me, tier three are add-on items, things that I might carry if I've happened to be wearing a jacket, for example, if I have more pockets on me and have the capability of carrying more items on me from a day-to-day -day basis, but don't necessarily need to have them at all times. Those are my tier three items. So things like an Altoids EDC kit, or a notepad, or a Faraday bag for your cell phone, or maybe a USB power bank. If I have a way of carrying those items on me, for example, if I'm wearing a jacket, those become part of my tier three items. And then for me, there's tier four, and those are expansion items. So items that I might carry in an EDC backpack or an EDC sling bag, or maybe in your purse, for example. All of those items expand upon the EDC that you carry in your pockets. Stay tuned for a new video on my updated EDC commuter bag. Coming out soon. So for me, the items that you carry in your expansion EDC gear, like your EDC backpack, should complement the items that you already have as part of your core EDC or your prepper tools. For example, if you carry a multi-tool as part of your EDC that you have in your pockets, it doesn't make as much sense for me to be able to have the same multi-tool in my backpack. I'd rather have something that would complement the multi-tool that I already have on me. So rather than having an exact replica of that multi-tool, for example, I might have a small little wrench that would complement the capabilities that I already have from that multi-tool. So in prepping in general, it's very common to think in terms of redundancy or having redundancy layers. Some people like having exact duplicates of those items. I like looking at it as a concept I call complementary redundancy. So having layers of redundancy to specific items, but having them all complement each other. For example, I may have a small EDC flashlight in my pocket, and then in my EDC backpack, I might have a larger flashlight. And then in my vehicle, for example, maybe I'll have a headlamp in there that complements my flashlight that I already have on me. Again, rather than having two of the exact same flashlights, it would be nice to have a headlamp and a flashlight. They would complement each other. To me, that means complementary redundancy. So just as a heads up, everyone should have a slightly different EDC. It doesn't make much sense for you to have the exact same EDC that I have because my EDC is custom made for my particular needs. Yeah, there may be some common items. Maybe we both like the same type of flashlight or we like the same multi-tool. But in general, everyone's EDC should be different and it's probably always gonna be changing as well. In my opinion, your EDC should be on you basically all the time. A good test for that is do you have your EDC with you if you're using a public restroom? You never know when an emergency situation might happen, so you want to have your EDC with you at all times. It doesn't do you much good if you have an awesome EDC that you left at your desk at work and you're in the restroom and now you need to use something. In my opinion, you're the most vulnerable when you're in the restroom. Now let's talk about EDC loadout. There's a lot of different strategies that you could follow as part of your EDC loadout. Me personally, I like carrying things in my pockets. So I have them strategically placed, whether they're in my front pocket, my front left pocket, my front right pocket, my back pocket, my jacket pocket. That's the strategy that I like using. Other people might like having their EDC maybe in a fanny pack, for example, where it's all put into one place. When you get home, you could take it off and when you're out and about, you could put it back on. Some of the ladies like having their EDC in their purse. Another common method is to have your EDC in a sling bag. So you could go with whatever your personal preference is. Again, I like going with the Batman approach of putting everything on when I need to go out. Here's some of the things that I personally look out for for EDC items. For example, for a folding knife, I like having a folding knife with a very deep pocket clip so the knife isn't really sticking out of your pocket too much. I also like having it in a non-threatening color. For whatever reason, I think blue or maybe even a wood scale folding knife is less threatening than a black tactical knife. For EDC flashlights, I like going with rechargeable flashlights with a high output battery cell, like an 18650 for example, and I also like going with ones that have a flat tail on it. That's just my personal preference. This particular one is the Olight Baton series. For lighters, I used to carry Zippo lighters, but I'd always have to be refilling them, so now I just carry a Bic lighter on me. 
I never have to worry about refilling them. They're inexpensive and they always work when I need them to. I like going with a smaller multi-tool versus a full-size multi-tool because I like avoiding having too much stuff in my pockets that's gonna have printing in the pants that I'm wearing. I like referring to that as the dreaded prepper bulge, basically having way too much stuff in your front pockets. So for me personally, I like looking for EDC items that I could fit in small modules to help me keep organized. So I have a tools module and I have a first aid module as well. They're both the same size and they easily fit in your pockets. As I briefly mentioned earlier, I think that your EDC should constantly be evolving. It shouldn't just be a static EDC, like you've had the same knife for 20 years, you've had the same flashlight for 10 years. I think that it's a good idea to always be changing, looking for new things and refining your systems. That could be in both the gear that you carry and the way that you carry those items. That's why oftentimes you'll see a lot of various preppers and channels out there constantly showing their updated EDC. In the flashlight world, for example, there's been a lot of great improvements over the last 10 years on the type of flashlights that you could carry as part of your EDC. They're getting more and more powerful and smaller and smaller in size. In my opinion, EDC is probably the most fun emergency preparedness topic to think about. I don't even think you should really start with building a bug out bag, for example. You should start by building your EDC because those are the items that you're most likely gonna use on a more regular basis. I still haven't had to use my bug out bag during an actual emergency situation, but I have used my EDC on many occasions. Eventually you'll get to the point where you feel naked without having your EDC on you, in the same way that you feel naked when you don't have your phone with you or you don't have your wallet on you. For me personally, if I don't have my multi-tool, if I don't have my first aid kit on me, I feel a little bit naked. That's a really good sign in your journey as a prepper. Preppers come in all forms. Oftentimes when you think of a prepper, you think of someone with a gas mask on and some military fatigues and things like that. But I've been a prepper for a very long time and I wear button up shirts and I live in an urban environment and do a lot of commuting and things like that. You never know who a prepper might be. Although if you happen to notice a pocket clip in their front pocket that has a folding knife, that person might be a prepper. So this was my EDC 101 video, just the basics. There's a lot of great content out there for the 200 and 300 level courses. So if you like what you saw in this 101 course, go down the rabbit hole and continue looking at the various EDC topics. There's a lot of great videos out there on various strategies for EDC. I go into more detail on a lot of those individual strategies here on this channel. But I highly encourage you to go in the search bar, search EDC setup or EDC loadout or EDC and whatever the current year is. You're likely to find a lot of great videos. That's gonna do it for this video featuring EDC 101. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. If you like these type of videos, consider subscribing to the channel. Be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below regarding this video. Again, this video was part of a collaboration for National Preparedness Month in the month of September. So thanks again for watching this video and see you next time. Take care.